Hello, welcome back to another uh, tutorial. Today I am going to be looking at Photoshop. I know I've been kind of focused on Rhino and Grasshopper recently, but I still love Photoshop, playing around with it. I recently had been learning about matte painting, so I want to take an image I'd already had created and I rendered it in um, Twin Motion, which uses Unreal Engine. And I want to kind of take this image which I made for a competition six months ago or something, and I want to really step it up. The competition was really rushed, so I never really got to get the image exactly where I wanted it to be. So I decided to take this concept of matte painting, which I learned from Archi9, which I'll link in the description, um, and use these techniques and sort of really bring this image to another level. The way I'm going to be doing it is this process took me maybe an hour and a half over multiple days you know just to just to do so I sped the whole process up and I went over and I re-recorded over um, with audio so I'll talk through the concepts of what I was thinking at any one time and my decision making throughout and then and you'll be able to see it in uh, in quick speed it's not really a technical tutorial so I'm not telling you shortcuts within Photoshop I'm just more talking about the over what makes an overall good image and how you can sort of look at images you've already made and, and revamp them to be something that you want uh, to, to show, essentially. Anyways, let's dive into it right now. What you can see here is I'm uh, testing out some of these brushes that I downloaded um, to do the matte painting. I quickly just start blocking out sort of what I desire, um, bringing, as I said before, some objects into the foreground and sort of deflattening this image and and kind of drawing your eye to that that uh, cafe in the lower right hand corner. Um, I don't know how successful this image was, but um, but we will see what I can do here. Um, so what I'm doing now is I'm I needed I realized that because of twin motion I hadn't constructed anything in the background. I kind of wanted to bring in some depth to the actual image so I so I brought in an actual picture that I found from uh, from Google Earth in on in Street View in LA of actual the actual mountains in the area so I plop that in the background and then I'm over here just basically color sampling some some of the shadows from the palm tree uh, to construct another palm tree which I brought to bring into the foreground to again create that sort of tiered depth here I am, I just copied that same palm tree back over. Um, and I'm putting a couple over here to once again sort of focus your eye and sort of draw your your vision in on that Sal's Donuts and, and the activity that's going around, around there. I'm being really sloppy here, as you can kind of see. I'm just quickly editing out or uh, painting uh, in clipping masks a palm tree so it goes to the background. And then sometimes you can see I'm using sort of the R, the R command to... Uh, to rotate and uh, to scale and see to see what it looks like from different uh, viewpoints and then i painted in some shadows um, within another map painting um to see sort of again what it would look like bringing bringing out that bringing depth into the foreground and and drawing your eye towards that corner and i'm starting to think this looks pretty nice uh, i painted another person in i'm thinking about another car here um, to sort of to to frame the bottom of the image and uh, I'm testing out different colors of these cars and, and darkness to them um, to really make them not to be in the foreground however not in the forefront of your eye so it's not drawing your eye necessarily it's pushing your eye past past that thing while still maintaining the colors of the image and then I get this idea that I should sort of place a man leaning against his car looking towards Sal's Donut be really explicit with what I want to uh, to show here. Now I'm testing more stuff with the uh, with the trees. And actually, in the end, um, I actually really liked what I did um, with in the map painting. This is sort of my first time ever experimenting with map painting. I saw some videos, um, which I will link in the description of sort of these inspiring map painting artists uh, and I'll, and I'll show you, uh, I'll, well, I'll link those and you can go and check them out yourself. They're amazing and super inspiring for your imagery. Okay, now I kind of dive into the actual entourage. Now that I have the matte painting uh, version, I want to actually obviously bring in entourage and do match it to the image 
how the image already is. And I so I just quickly um, bring in just a couple uh, images of palm trees that I find, quickly clip them out. I'm not really going for exact precision in terms of um, getting all the, the fringes of the, the PNG image uh, clipped out. I'm just kind of mocking it up quickly first before diving into the details. That's one thing I've really found out is is you can spend a lot of time on the details and then realize you don't even like it. The whole the wholeness of it, it hasn't come together. So I so I definitely recommend that. And here I was of course looking for classic uh, classic car, really thinking of LA. Like when I think of LA, I'm definitely thinking of the automobile. So I did spend a little bit of time looking for the correct car. Um, and this one happened to be an orange, which I knew I wanted to make the, the car an orange. And here I am quickly cr clipping, uh, creating a clipping mask. And I know I'm only going to need that back half because I'm going to try to place it there because I already discovered that in a matte painting. So I knew when I was searching for that image, I didn't need to go and find a full car in the correct perspective. I only needed that back half that, that I can use the warp tool and sort of distort to make the correct perspective. Um, here I... I'm taking away someone's wonderful work of uh, of water marking their image. I'm quickly dip, dis, disposing of that. Um, I'm not really being that careful because I know, once again, that this will not be the primary focus of the image. So I'm just using the uh, the, the paper or what is it called, um, clone stamp tool to kind of um, to bring that in. And so now, so now that I have that image in there, it's decently cropped. It's, uh, I'm testing out the colors, I'm painting in more shadows, um, and trying to sort of, you know, bring, bring that image to life. And then, oh, here I just, you know, this is just a simple mistake where I'd previously uh, cropped the sky poorly. You can, you can see me continually toggling back um, on and off the the matte paint layer that I that I painted on over my original image, um, and that's just continually to sort of reference that and like think about. It. So now I'm looking for that man, you know, that's leaning on the back of the car, facing towards Salas Donuts. And again, I spend a lot of time sort of uh, looking for this guy, and and this is where I sort of found what I wanted. Um, because I want a guy who's looking at his in one direction. I was getting a lot of dark shadows, and then I think I yeah I did settle with this guy. And once again, you're gonna see me like quickly crop this guy. I don't I don't spend that much time. I'm not a professional uh, visualizer. I I kind of do it casually. Um, if you zoom into basically any of my images, you're gonna see that they're kind of sketchy. But what is, what are you gonna do? Um, Anyway, so here I, so I think I, I think I ended up changing that palm tree. The palm, I knew the palm tree in the foreground kind of wasn't, wasn't the nicest one. So I kind of just went back in here and just swapped out that palm tree, still matching it to the matte painting, but just using a different tree. And I already know that there's like inconsistencies between that palm tree and the palm tree in the center in the very uh, middle, which was made in twin motion. So it's kind of, there's kind of problems there, but whatever. Here I'm painting shadows onto the car. I just quickly put a layer of, uh, and turn down the brightness, and then um, quickly just paint over the car where those shadows would be to correct the color to the scene lighting. Um, this is just a quick little, quick and messy uh, way of doing it. Use a soft brush, you get like really soft edges. You can even blur that paint later, and then just make it real opaque. But you can see already the images on that, or the, the shadows on that car are already looking fantastic. I'm going back and I'm kind of just painting out a couple errors on the palm tree, getting some lighting correct on it, and then um, and repositioning it in terms, because you're always going to change uh, the positioning. I don't think I was happy necessarily with that palm tree, and I definitely hate these palm trees. Like, look at these, these fringe. I tried defringing them. I tried doing everything to get rid of this white, and it was continually just being a problem. So I think, I don't remember what I do here. I think I kind of, oh, yeah, I just, I, at some point I just give up. And I just start using a paintbrush, sampling the colors of uh, of the palm tree, and I just paint over the <laughs> paint over the white spots. And it's it's in the background, so you can't re you can't really see it. Doesn't, it doesn't it doesn't really matter though. I know my images are not perfect. It's all about sort of the the ambiance of them, not about the photorealism or perfection. And here I tweak the color, the car color, 
to match those chairs in, the, in front of Sal's donuts. Um, yeah, this is also part of the map paint. I knew I had, I had more complex shadows coming across the, the ground in the foreground. So I just took a palm tree, distorted it, painted it black, and then blurred it to create those um, shadows in the foreground that sort of clip out the, the street curb so the street curb isn't so much in presence in your view. You're looking past now that point of view to the more brighter parts of the image. Um, yeah, this image doesn't, isn't perfect, but it is what it is. Uh, what am I doing here? I am struggling to clipping mask again out some plants. I wanted to sort of, I want see my, in that painting part, I had kind of, um, darkened this area. So, so once again, you're looking past it. And so in order to darken, I need to put something there. So I was kind of bringing in darker colored plants and placing them here and then I'm kind of just lightly painting on the shadow so it does look like they're being lit from behind the scene on the right um yeah this oh then this I I painted the road darker because the road was being rendered in pure white in twin motion so of course it was uh it was it was white and it was kind of distracting so I just came in here quickly, uh, go in and manually repaint everything that was uh, over the road because I didn't export out a, uh, or I didn't have a depth or an object pass. I didn't render out an object pass because I don't know how to do that in Twin Motion, which is kind of a, a pain. So I, kind of, so I brought in another plant, did the same technique for darkening it, uh, painted on more lights and shadow onto that plant. And then I'm just, I think I'm doing the final tweaks now, adjusting that, um, adjusting that foreground shadow. And then I'm taking, and then I, what I did here is I took the, 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 I took one of the other images I made for this competition and I took the color filters I um, used for that, the camera raw. And because it's camera raw on a smart object, I just duplicated that into this file and then I, copied the camera raw and then I just casually went through it and, and made minor tweaks, but I had already had the, the color uh, post post processing of the image done. So it was just a simply a matter of uh, tweaking it, you know, so that the car, the car colors weren't so distorted and, um, and whatnot. Anyways, thanks for watching so much. Uh, it's been a pleasure. I'm back in my studio so I can now produce better audio quality. Hopefully this microphone is recording right now and yeah. Thanks again. Leave a like, subscribe. Thank you very much. See you on another one.